So here we will be solving rotate array. Let's read the question. The question here, the question statement says, given an unsorted array ARR, rotate the array to the left, which is counterclockwise direction by D steps. All right, where D is a positive integer, do the mentioned change in the array in place. Okay, that means the array that we are given in the question, we have to make changes in that. We cannot make up a new one and do changes to that one. All right. So let's talk about this rotation, the anti-clock rotation, right? Well, this actually, like uh, most of it, most often it is also known as the left rotation. What happens in it? Let's say if I have to rotate this array, uh, I have to left rotate this array by one, then what will I do? The element that I have in front will go at the back. You can say in this direction, it will go at the back and every other element would shift just one space on this side, on the left side. Thus, what is this? This is the left rotation. All right. So I hope now the left rotation is clear to you, which you have to perform. But in this question, D is mentioned. That means you have to perform this rotation D times. Now let's see a few sample test cases in which we are performing this. Well, in this array, as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five as the elements, right? Let me write it down here. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Now, once we rotate this by two, that means after one rotation, how would it look like? It would uh, it would look like this, correct? After one more rotation, it would look like this. Fine. So this is the final answer, and you can see it is given here. Now, again, similar similar examples are given. This time, d is changed to three, and this time, d is changed to nine. Okay, what is happening here? You can notice that the length of the array is 4. But you might be asked to rotate the array more than its uh, like more than the times of its length even. That is possible because like after a set of rotation, once you perform four rotations already in this array which is having uh, which is having the size 4, you will get back to the initial position where you started. And then you will again go for left many times. And once the rotation is done, then you need to return the answer, okay? You already might have started getting an idea that we are doing uh, like so many unnecessary rotation here. But in the forthcoming approaches, we are going to deal with everything. Don't worry, okay? So coming on to our very first approach, I've already showed you that uh, how we can rotate one element or we can say how we can rotate just one time so once we know that we are rotating the element uh, at the elements one time, it's very simple. Let's say you have the sample array. What you can do, uh, let's say I took a variable and I copied the first element in it. Fine. Then what do I have to do? I have to begin from this point till this, a simple traversal. I will be copying the elements just to the element which is kept next to it on the left side, main on the main thing. Now, this would be overwritten by two. This would be overwritten by three. Similarly, all of these values will be overwritten and the last value would be repeated. And now I can just simply whatsoever I'm holding in the temp, I can replace it with that. So this is how you're performing one rotation, correct? And once you perform this operation D times, you can say that the work is done. The most brute force method of doing this question is this, right? Let's analyze the complexity of a little. So that we that you have already seen in the diagram must have guessed that for just performing one rotation, how much time are we taking? We are taking order of n time, right? And how many times do we have to perform this operation? Well, that, well it turns out that we have to perform it d times, correct? Now, d could be any number which is given in the range mentioned in the question. So this would not be a very suitable uh, approach for this, correct? We need to optimize it. We need to find up a better solution. And once more, just so we don't leave it, the space complexity for this one is going to be order of one because we are not using any extra space here, right? And this variables are not considered unless it is a data like uh, a structure we are using, which is growing with the input. So now coming on to the next approach, well, it is a very famous algorithm for rotation of the arrays and it is called juggling algorithm. All right, what do we do in this? 
well first of all let's just see the example in, uh, a little bit this is the sample array that we uh, that we are taking here and this is d that many times i have to rotate it it's clear in this approach i would be focusing on the gcd of the length of the array and this value d all right now once i get the gcd of it i will know then like in how many equal pieces i can divide this big array in our case let's say we have six elements we have d as two then the gcd is going to be two as well right that means we can divide this array in the pieces of two correct so here we can make up this piece this piece and this piece all right now the magic about this algorithm is that once you just shift all the elements all the elements that you have of these pieces to the next one well the complete array would be rotated the way you want it to okay what do i need to do see it in this diagram and try to notice the pieces this is the first piece this is the second and this is the third so in just one iteration what will i do i will take all of the first occurring element of my small pieces or small chunks of the array and i will simply shuffle it okay second one goes to the first the third one goes to the second and so on and so forth till we repeat that means we come back to a situation in which we are coming uh, like in which we are exhausting the array and the module is telling that we are repeating my repeating our own work till then we have to keep on doing this and once we are done with the first position we will do the same thing for the second one how will we do that well simply you can see it here two four and six are all the second elements of the respective chunks this is the first one this one will be stored somewhere and we can put it afterwards the second one would take this position the third one would take this position as similarly it will go on till the end so this is how shifting is happening and once the complete chunks are shifted well then the array would be rotated let's try to see it with an example here we need to keep track of two things two variables the current index and the next index if we have to perform this shuffling we have to keep track of all the uh, all the elements occurring uh, at the first of all the chunks so you can see let's suppose i have put the current index here okay and i have put the next index here the first duty is to update my current variable because we have we are shifting right so what will i do i'll say arr my current index equals to uh, my arr next index well this will copy the element right now i have to shift both of these this would be shifted plus d times and this would be shifted where next index was okay the updated values are here and then again we have to do the same thing we have to copy the elements and we have to keep on doing this till we reach this situation in which my current index is at the end and my next index is going at the front that means we are using the modulo okay so once we have completed this iteration well this is just one it uh, like this is just one loop we are going through one loops one single iteration and all of the first element of all the chunks are shifted by one are shifted to the another left chunk we have to only do it d more times so once we do that that many times then the whole array would be rotated fine okay so here we have performed the same thing that i've just told you for the second one i told you for the first element now we have performed the second element shifting and eventually we have reached this answer which is required okay analyzing complexity of this a little bit well did we access any of the elements more than once in this array no and all the iterations that we did were completely independent so that means my time complexity here is going to be order of n we are visiting each and every uh, cell of the array once and the space complexity is obviously order of one because we are not using any extra space so this is like quite a fascinating algorithm you can use it for this problem now quickly checking the code for this approach you can see i've kept the track of n the size of the array then i am doing this to avoid all the 
unnecessary rotations that I might have to do when the value of D goes larger than N. Okay. Now I'm calculating the GCD of the N, the length, comma D, because I need to find the size of the chunks in my array in which I have to perform the shifting. Okay. Now you can see I'm performing shifting in this manner. I've done for I in range cycles. That means how many cycles do I need to take? Uh, which would be in turn uh, the number of chunks that we have, right? Then what do I do? I put, I put a start element just as a temporary variable. I'm putting that as element up. Then I'm choosing current index where I'm standing right now. And I'm performing this. What is that? My current index. I need to copy the thing. I need to move the pointers. I, I just copied the thing and I moved the pointers. And this will go on and on till this situation happens. That means my one single uh, you can single iteration or single traversal is over. That means I am coming back to the position where I started. Once that, ha once that happened, I can simply break out of this loop. Okay. And this loop will only run GCD times, not more than that. Number of chunks times. So once that is done, we have to perform this. That means after this, the last element that we took in the temporary variable, I have to keep that at the last. So once this is done, you can completely execute it. And this is one of the very valid approaches for rotating your array anti-clockwise. Uh, but there is one more approach that we are going to discuss now. And that approach is called as reversal algorithm. So this algorithm intuition is basically, uh, you know, like derived from a observation. Let's say you, we have our D element, like D number, the D integer by which we have to rotate this array anti-clockwise. So considering that, we can see, uh, we can think of our array as divided into two parts. Uh, the first one is from initial till the D point and then the leftover array. Okay. Now in this, what are we doing is like once we achieve the result of uh, the rotation, we will observe that the elements that we have in this first chunk will move at the last and the elements that we have in this chunk will move here at the front. So what are we doing? We are just switching the positions of these two chunks. Now, how can this positioning, this repositioning be achieved? Well, a very simple way could be rearranging them. Okay. Or you can say it could be reversing them. Let's see how. Let me take one small example here. Suppose you have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, once you like simply, if, uh, if you have to rotate it by two, you have to rot uh, rotate it by two elements. That means the two chunks would be these two elements and the leftover array. Let's call them A and B for now. So now what will happen if we reverse this? The array would be like four, five, four, sorry, five, four, three, two, and one. Now once we have that, you can see all the elements that you had in your B are now at the front. All the elements you had in your A are now at the back. But there is one situation. It is that uh, these two chunks are completely reversed. You done the reversing for the first time, you achieved this. But now for the second time, to again have them, uh, like have these elements in the particular sequence, what will you do is, you will again reverse this B and reverse this A. So once you do, you can say three, four, five, this will be reversed. You can say one and two, this will be reversed. And this is nothing but the answer we wanted, okay? So performing this sort of reversal will result in our actual answer. So in this algorithm, simply the sequence of reversal is going to be uh, changed a little. What we will do? Firstly, we will take these two chunks and we would reverse them initially only. And then we would reverse the complete answer so that we can achieve our final output. Let's take an example and see that. We have both of these things. We have the length of the array and we do know that how many times do I have to rotate this array? Now what will I do is, I will divide this array in two chunks. First one is going to be D, okay, uh, chunk of length D. And the another chunk is going to be of all the leftover elements, well, specifically N minus D. This approach says, take the first chunk of D elements, simply reverse that part of the array. Then take the another chunk and reverse that part of the array too. Once you are done with this, then simply reverse the complete array and this will easily very easily give you the resultant that you are waiting for that means it will give you rotated array d times okay quite a very fascinating approach so let's see what is going to be the complexity of it 
Well, what are we performing? We are performing uh, reversing the uh, reversing the array, right? How much the, how much time does that take? Well, we are reversing half of the chunk. Then you are reversing half of the chunk. We can consider this one as order of n, considering n is the length of complete chunk of the complete array. Then you are reversing the complete array once more to get the answer. So you can say, okay, it's one more time O of n. Eventually, you can say the complexity, the time complexity for this is order of n. Are we using any extra space here? Well, we are not, right? So order of 1 is going to be the space complexity of this approach. Let's quickly see the uh, code for this one as well. Well, the code is written here. What are we doing? Again, simply uh, keeping the track of the length. I'm just uh, doing d modulo n. Again, to just avoid the unnecessary rotations made. Then, very simple, what we have just discussed in the algorithm, reverse the first d elements like this, reverse the remaining n minus d elements, then reverse the complete array. And I've made this a small reverse function which is helping me out in reversing the arrays. Okay, now that we have seen two very good algorithms, the juggling algorithm and the reversal algorithm, let's try to run both of these and see if these both are passing all the test cases or not. So here is the code of juggling algorithm that we just discussed. Let's try to compile and run and, if, and see if, if it is passing the sample case. Okay, it is giving us the expected output. Just like we, uh, we had a dry run of it. Now submitting this problem. Okay, so it is passing all of the test cases. Let's also see the other approach that we have discussed. So this one is the reversal algorithm. Okay, we have already seen the code and this little function reverse, which is helping me to reverse the array, compiling the code here, and it must give, yeah, it is giving the expected output here as well. Submitting this, we can see that it is passing all the test cases, right? So we have learned about two very useful algorithms for rotation. I hope you have understood it. If you have not, then quickly just rewatch the video and try to do the dry run parallelly and that would definitely work and if you liked the video and you understood the approach then do leave me a comment telling me how you liked it and like the video as well thanks